on praise, not so much in the order of I'm teaching on praise, worship, and glory, but I'm going to be mixing them all in to let you know. Praise, worship, and the glory. Praise, worship, and the glory. Most charismatic Pentecostals understand the praise. Praise is exhorting his name, lifting him up. Praise calls you to ascend. If you ever been a person that says, well, I don't feel close to God, start praising him. Because he inhabits the praise of his people. Meaning, he lives with their praise. Yes, well, Bishop, what about this worship? Worship is why I really come to church. Because you're going to always find God where his people is. I'm not talking about a building. I'm talking about believers. See, worship can happen in a grocery store if two come together. Well, two or three gather together in my name, I'll be in the midst of them. And see, when you know who you worship it, you can't confine him to a building. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God. Unto salvation. Worship will make you lose yourself in Him. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. See, worship is not about you being touched. That's a byproduct. Worship is about touching Him. Yeah. Oh. Oh. The English word dealing with worship, it was called worthship. What well, he's worth, W O R T H, show. What well, he's worth to you. Yeah. Worship is more like a dog. Anybody have dogs? When you come home and you've been treating that dog right, that dog treats you like you rod. And that's what worship is. Worship is like bowing before God and licking the master's hand. And so when you see your dog jumping on you, licking you, think about worship. Because you that dog master. And when Jesus really becomes your master, a place don't dictate what you worship him. I just need to find one believer. Call his two gathered together in his name. He will be in the midst. He'll be in the midst. But praise store ascending. It carries you to him. Worship is in his atmosphere. Because now you, you're not talking about, I thank you for the, the, the uh, breath in my body and, and, and light deals paid. No wrong with that. Thank him for that. But then when you worship him, you start telling him, your majesty. You're brilliant. You're powerful. You're master. Oh, What yeah. you're worth to me. Yeah. It has nothing to do with what's going on in my life. You're still worthy. Yeah. And so it's not just about a feeling because you got to command your soul to praise God. Yeah. Because in this life, there's difficult things we face. And me, myself, to keep me from going into depression, I have to start exhorting him. Because if you focus on stuff, 
and things and what you're going through and life brings some obstacles. Yes, sir. But I have to get like David and say, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall, I don't feel like it, but I must do it. Yes. It's greater than a feeling. If I base my marriage on feelings, I would have left a long time ago. Come talk back to me. But relationship got to be built on commitment. I'm committed to you. You don't feel me because this life, folks, is so uncommitted. Yes, sir. But when you're committed to your relationship with God, when trouble hits your life, it don't cause you to run from God. It causes you to run to Him. Yes. 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 Why you ain't been to church? Well, things been so hard. Life is hard. Hardness should bring you into His presence. Because when I'm weak, He is strong. Yes. And so worship is what he's worth to you. I'm seeing the word time, talent, and treasure. What you love, you spend your time, your talent, and your treasure in. Your time. How much time do you... Can I go back to a human relationship to show you uh, anthropomorphism? Mm -hmm. the, uh, describing a human attributes to a, a divine God? When you met your wife or husband, you want to spend some... Yeah. Come back to me! Yeah. Time. But when you don't value what you once had, then your time gets scattered. Yeah. Uh, I'm not talking about you, 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 you don't work. I don't want you to get like the Thessalonians saying they quit their job and were waiting for Jesus. <laughs> uh, stop laughing. Some of y'all date brothers like that. He ain't working. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> go to the Thessalonian believers and he, he says this. He says, man, if a man don't work, he don't eat. So you gonna get to Jesus before he come back because you finna starve yourself. <laughs> so go to work. I'm not talking about folks who are looking for a job. God gonna open up doors for people that they can get jobs. I'm talking about folks who won't work. <laughs> See, they ain't clapping too hard. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. The brothers, they hit the brothers. Then, well, I'm talking about you gold diggers, too. You waiting for somebody to come and take care of you. Yeah. No, he needs to see that you will be his help me before he bring you off your job. <laughs> Amen, Bishop. It's just like ministry or anything else. What makes anything success is not one person. In, in Christendom, uh, uh, us being believers, our success rides in how much he's worked to us. And we we'll never put nobody on the throne, no matter how great a preacher they are, they ain't Jesus. Right. Keep Jesus on the throne and a good preacher points you to him. A good preacher ain't trying to point you to them, but to him. Because he need him like he pointing you. Talk back to me. So we can get the work. Where's my time going after work? Where do I put my talent? 
And talent don't mean everybody come join the church and get in a choir. Right. Reggie here for a reason to death. Look at Reggie's job. Reggie's job to me and, and uh, the police officers is ministry. Because you serving our youth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Teachers. You pay somebody $250 million, get all the money you can, boo -ho. they can hit a baseball. For somebody who teaching your children, on, society don't want to pay them nothing. We're twisted. We need to worship him so he can turn us right side up, still upside down. Entertainment, because you can shoot a basketball, you can shoot fifty hoops and then count to fifty. And I have nothing against sports. Sports kept me out of a lot of trouble. Heard over my boys club. It's boys and girls club now. But shit there every day. Shit there every day. Mr. Pierce from AC. Many people invested in us. You don't know what child watching you, even in the church. And so we want to show them that we worship him for real. Because worship ain't just a song, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. It's an attitude and it's a lifestyle. You seen folk go to church, but they mean outside the church. They ain't true worshipers. Oh, oh you ain't got the I, I say you gonna view out. <laughs> you want me to start calling names? I can tell you the meanest. I, I was gonna lose my job, but no, that's okay. I'm gonna tell you, Jenny, I'm gonna tell you the meanest person, the meanest member. And true redemption center. Everybody want to know it? Raise your hand. I do know it, folks. Look at you. You're hypocrites. You're hypocrites. You want to know it? The true people who want to know. I'm going to point out the meanest member in this church. You want to know it, David? Thank you. Because everybody else hypocrite. I see why you broke the bench. <laughs> see, they don't want to do it openly because backbiters talk behind your back. <laughs> true people that God raised up and used just like you. Because you tell the truth. Well, the meanest member in our church is your tongue. Right. right. <laughs> it boasts big things. Yes, sir. Is cursed men who God created and try to bless with the same lips. The meanest member in my church is your tongue. James talked about it in the book of James. Unruly member. That's the meanest member in my church. Just listen at him. <laughs> that memory didn't just start in my church. Do you remember when Jesus was uh, on the road and, and, and they said, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. They called it Palm Sunday. When they, they had the leaves, the, the big old. Then the next week, the same people who said, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he that coming in the name of the Lord. The next week they said, crucify him. And so I want us to learn to use our tongue to bless man and not talk about him. Because can I tell you something? If you're going to become a true worshiper, you're going to have to learn how to speak well of God. You're going to have to learn how to lift him up. And then you can speak well of people. I don't care how they have fallen. You fail too. I fail too. We miss the mark too. That's why you ain't got time to set judgment up on folks. 
Every time you speak of somebody, it's something negative. Watch folks who do that because when you walk away, they're going to say, oh, they're going to say something about you too. Yes, sir. But don't get through away. When you become into this place in God where I'm trying to help you get, you're going to be talked about. Because the Bible said, listen here, uh, all them that live godly shall, not maybe, shall suffer persecution. I wrote on Larry Facebook wall, I said, Larry, I will be back in town. I will uh, be preaching tomorrow on Larry Page. I checked back on Larry Page. Under it, somebody wrote, Bishop Davis caught in a place, uh, pants down. Go, go look at your page. Please take that off too. You can, you can take it off. But anybody that's going to live godly, somebody going to try to throw mud yeah. Come on. on you. But not just because I'm a preacher. They do it in his position. They do it in your position. They do it wherever because people haven't learned to honor God. And when you don't honor and reverence God, you can't honor people. And folks, I, I, I'm trying to take you somewhere. This is going to take me two or three weeks. But folks that don't honor people don't really honor God. Because God said, how can you say you love me? you never seen me. I watch how you treat each other. And so when I have a real proper relationship with God, I'm going to love on people. I'm going to honor people. I'm going to try to help people. I'm going to be about doing the will of God. Jesus said, my meat is not. Well, I mean, let's go to the Bible. Go to St. John 4, chapter. Start at verse 1. I, I, I don't have nothing but 19 minutes to go. Go, uh, Brother Hines. St. John 4, start at verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard. You may be seated. We run in here. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees, say Pharisees, Pharisees, had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Watch this. And, and you got to watch this. Folk caught up in this today. Man, how, how many you got? How many you run and die? You have a thousand people and two ready to go to heaven. I ain't running nothing, Doc. Whatever happening, God's doing it. Watch this. But they says that Jesus is baptizing more disciples than John. Read. Though Jesus himself baptized not. But Jesus didn't baptize. Jesus had a team. If you're going to be successful in, 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 in doing anything for God, you don't need to be a long ranger. You don't need to be a superstar. You need a super team. You need people that are willing to do the will of God and get no credit. But give all the credit to God. Watch this. Jesus didn't baptize none of them. But John the Baptist. I mean, uh, uh, but John about to baptize him. But Jesus didn't baptize none of them. His disciples did. Yeah. But because his disciple was his team, when they took him down, they, he was, they was doing it for Jesus. Right. They were saying, hey, we baptized a hundred folks. All the credit went to the one that deserved Jesus. You know, if you're going to do anything powerful on the earth, it won't be done by you. That's why he didn't make you the body of Christ. He has many members, yeah. but it's one body. Yeah. And that's why he ain't often to all this denominational stuff that divides us. He got one church he coming back, and it's some Catholic folk, it's some Baptist folk, it's some Church of God in Christ folk, it's some Pentecostal folk, it's some, and he said, I got some folk, I ain't even Jew yet. So you just learn how to work together. Yeah. I'm trying to go somewhere here. Yeah. I don't care how good Michael Jordan was till they got some people around him one on championship man made. Yeah. Let's go. 
He left Judea and departed again into Galilee. Uh huh. And he must need go through Samaria. He must need go through Samaria. At the time the Jews wouldn't go through Samaria, they'd go to the east side of Jordan to bypass Samaria. But to Jesus, everybody was important. So you ain't gonna witness to nobody who 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 don't look like you, think like you, act like you. But Jesus wasn't like that. The Jews had no dealing with the Samaritan, but Jesus said, I must go through Samaritan. What's some places you don't want to go that Jesus really wants you to go? Come on, come on. I'm teaching Billy y'all helping me today. Y'all want me to hold my ear, but I ain't grabbing that ear. Three. Then he comes to a city of Samaria, uh -huh. which is called Sychar. Uh -huh. Near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Uh -huh. Now jo Jacob well was there. Jesus therefore being weary with his journey set thus on the well. You mean Jesus got tired? But why y'all come to church talking about Bishop on vacation again? If Jesus got tired, don't you think I do? Come back up to me. What I love about this church, it ain't built on me. Y'all know I'm gone, y'all still coming to worship Jesus. Some churches, if they find out the past, they ain't gonna be there, they ain't coming. Not here. Because <laughs> if you really do it right, you're gonna train everybody to be better than you. Intimidated leaders don't want people better. I want you better. When you better, you make me better. Are y'all right? Read. Being weary of his journey, set thus on the wheel. And it was about the sixth hour. Uh huh. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Now, what was strange, this woman was coming during the noonday. You didn't come draw water during the noonday, but she was a woman that was embarrassed because many folks talk about what type of woman she was. Usually they go draw water like 6 a.m. in the morning. But she had a lifestyle that when they come, they snigger and laugh at her. So she came during the noonday. Huh. See, if you all knew some of the things in my past, you wouldn't come to listen to me. But I'm so glad Jesus ain't like y'all. He came right in the whole house to get me. Did he say whore? That's what I meant. He came in a dope house to see about me. Yeah, yeah. That's why I will worship him because he's a God that don't turn his nose up because you have messed up in life. He'll reach down and pick you up. There's a woman left my church because I said a whore one time. I said, you know what? I want all y'all to leave who don't read your Bible. Because if you read your Bible, whore is in there 66 times. And if God can say whore, I can too. Matter of fact, I was whore-ish. Yeah, a whole lot of folk were. But then you have children, you want them to be angels. You understand? Yes, but I'm glad where he brought us from. Because our nose ain't so stuck up that we can't reach down to reach somebody else. Why? Because we've been in a sewer too. He picked us up. Don't forget where you came from. Oh, they smell, you smell too. And if you didn't smell in the older, you smell with your attitude. My parents just said you're smelling your own. Y'all say the same thing. Your mama was mama. Can't forget. If you're going to do ministry and you're going to do it effectively, you can't forget you was on dope. You can't forget you was a fornicator. You can't forget where he brought you from. That's what makes me worship him. Because you'll pick up somebody that the world threw to the side and say, boy, I still want to leave you. I clean you up. Just keep coming to me. Just keep telling me what I'm worth to you. I, who he forgive much, they love him much. That's why we're not ashamed. You ain't been through nothing. That's why we're a witness in Wild Green. That's why we're a witness in K Martin. That's why we're a witness in the court shop. When you've been through something, you don't just tell it in church. They need to tell me in the job. You need to leave this stuff in the church. I said, no, this two problems are for the church. It got to go outside the four walls. I got to let a dying world know that Jesus.
Jesus lived. I got to let a dying world that know that Jesus loved them and he will forgive them and he'll pick them up and he'll clean them up and he'll wash them up and then he'll stand them up and then he'll use them unto his glory. I'm so glad when I come into the house of God. I don't care what you got on and I don't care who you think you are. I came to worship him. Bishop ever. Not me. I want to be what the Father is looking for. He said, a Father seek it such to worship me. And them that will worship me in spirit and in truth. I just want to be a true worshiper. I want to get deeper in my worship. I want to love the Lord a little more than I did yesterday. I want to seek his face. I want to first start at his feet. I want to sit at his feet. Mary and Martha. Martha said, Jesus, Mary won't help me serve. She said, well, Mary, she seek the great thing. She seek a thing that lasts eternity. She seek to sit at my feet and worship me and hear my word. I'm so glad I picked the best part. I want to be a true worshiper. I want to worship him in the morning. I want to worship him with my lifestyle. I say it. Yeah. I say it. Yeah. I say it. Yeah. Saints, when you leave here, don't stop worshiping. Don't stop praising him. Seek God every day. Set up some time. You and him can know. You and him. Stop running after stuff. And run after God. Lord, it's nothing I need more than to be in your presence. Stop coming to church and using it like it's a fix. That's right, that's right. Or another drug. Mm -hmm. But come in to give him true praise. Yes. Come in and give him true worship. Yes. Lord, teach me how to worship you. Yes. In spirit yes, and in truth. Yes. God 
is a spirit. I don't even like the translation God is a spirit. God is spirit. Because if you say a, somebody will, uh, will say another. Because when I say a, there's a b and a c. God is spirit. They that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Lord, teach us to worship. For the Father seeketh such to worship. Then after worship is another dimension. And that's the dimension of glory. Glory take you from his feet to his face. And then you can talk to him face to face. <coughs> Raise your hand and say, Lord. Lord. Take me from praise, me from praise, from praise to, worship. to worship. From worship, from worship to, glory. to glory. Hallelujah. Hey. I'm coming to worship. It's not on Jerusalem. It's not in a place. It's in the person. But what, me, what makes me come here is that's where I will find him. Where his people is. You looking for him? Find his people. He thrills where his people is. Give God a great big hand. Come on, let's bless God for an awesome word. An awesome word for my man of God. Come on, let's praise God. Let's worship him on today. Come on, let's open up our mouth and worship him. Let's lift up our hands and worship him. Let's glorify our soon coming king. He's in the building. He's in the building. He's in the place right now. Let's worship him. Hallelujah. As we worship him, there are some under the sound of my voice that heard the word of God go forth on today and you made up your mind that you need Jesus in your life. If you want to come and get a relationship with a true and living Savior, accept him as your Lord and Savior, come down to the altars. We have elders that are qualified to lead you into the very things of God. If that is you, everybody standing to your feet. We don't need nobody blocking them as they prepare their way to come.